This tooth device was useful for. Is that original or is that your own idea? Uh, it was on one of the other West Solents. Yeah. And it wasn't original, even on that, but somebody had thought of it and it, it actually works quite well. Uh, just, uh, just bring it up and stick the helm. It could have a few more pegs in it, but uh, just to fine tune it. Is that sort of a Heath Robinson self steering? Yes. <laughs> Well, you missed them both, just. Yeah. Kevin, you bought her 26 years ago. Yes. Why did you buy a boat like this? It's a gentleman's racing yacht, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, two of my friends had had uh, West Solent's here on the River Blackwater. Um, and although I had a fast racing yacht of my own, a um, uh, gaffer called Sheena, which was extremely fast, especially in light winds. I thought it'd be a good idea to get a West Solent so I could actually s sail with these friends, right? Right, Kusha and uh, Devacious, boats which had been on base on the East Coast for many years. But you had to go a long way to buy it, didn't you? Yeah, I, I saw an advert in Classic Boat magazine um, for Miss Chief, which is number 29, come up in. 2001, and I, I flew down to Cannes, down to Nice, went up to Cannes, looked at her in, in the spring of 2001, then went back in May and after, after negotiating a price and um, brought, brought her back to the UK. Um, the, the journey up, we, we got the boat out of the water, got a low loader, uh, put, put the boat on the low loader, the, the mast got damaged at the top, a couple of inches got broken off, which was an aerodyne job, and then um, the, the um, jumper struts got, got smashed, and that was another aerodyne and um, manel wire job to get her home. Um, and we, we trailered her up to Calais, the, the um, big big giraffe shaped cranes up on the docks in Calais, put her in, into the water and uh, a couple of other owners came down to give, give, give me a hand to bring, bring the boat home. We um, initially tried to get the engine going, I had, I had somebody there, we never really got it going. It, it worked but it wasn't very good, we weren't relying on it and uh, initially started sailing sail her out the harbour. I thought we were running and we had to uh, we found that the uh, main chute wasn't long enough and ended up stem heading the uh, harbour wall because, because, because the main chute just wasn't long enough and we hadn't checked. And then we got a quarter of a mile out of the harbour just past the main pier heads and uh, I went down below and noticed the boat was full of water, up, ne nearly up to the cockpit level and uh, realised obviously something was wrong and just dis discovered it was coming in behind the engine. Um, we, initially we didn't know what, what the problem was so we got, got the hand pump and the electric pump bailing her and turned around and sailed her back into harbour and um, it, it was actually the, the prop had, had never been fixed by the previous owner who had put a new engine in, uh, this Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine I believe um, and uh, it had just unscrewed itself and come out out the back of the water, back of the boat through the quarter where it was went through and um, we, we managed to put it against the harbour wall in in Calais em 
empty the rest of the water and, and bang a, a wooden plug it in the hole and um, sailed it back the next day and just took it to Ramsgate. Um, there wasn't a lot of wind and then I went down a, a week or so later and brought her back to the Blackwater Estuary where, where she's been ever since. So what it is it what is it about this boat that, that is special? Uh, they're they're easy to sell, they're like selling a big dinghy. Um, they're very responsive. And although you've got a huge sail area, because you've got a twenty-four foot boom, they they do handle well and uh, and and they they're good fun. They really are good fun. They lay over and just go. And they're really great great boats. And uh, I remember the first time I, I sailed her on my own, after having my previous yacht, which was a 28 foot Gaffrig boat, I, I thought, oh, what have I done? You know, this is massive. It, it, it was difficult. I thought it was going to be difficult to handle, but, but actually, over the last 20 odd years, it, it, it's very easy to handle, and I, I'm quite happy on my own, if, if I am on my own. I, if I race, I always race with. Um, three or four others, three, yeah, three others, really, if we're going to use a spinnaker, but any more, it's just too busy in the cockpit. So, so to sell it between one and four people. It is a boy's toy though, isn't it? Oh yeah, um, it doesn't have a toilet, it's a bucket and chuck it job, and, uh, and all the girls do come on board, they, they, they don't usually stay too long. <laughs> It's not very lady friendly at all, is it? No. Originally, the cl when they, they started the class in the 1920s, there was a, a rule brought out that they all had to have toilets. And I, I believe all toilets were fitted in the whole class, but most of those have disappeared. Uh, and there wasn't one on this boat when I bought it. And I, I've seen photographs of yachts in, in sailing at Burnham on Crouch with, with women at the helm in the 1930s, so, so you know that they did used to come on board. My wife's a, a reluctant sailor. She, she she does come sailing, but she prefers the war, warm, warm, not too windy weather. So yours is pretty much um, in an original state, isn't it? It it's is. Got, I mean, it's got you've got no engine, no toilet. It's it's almost original. Yeah, it it is. It, it's been restored back to its original specs basic, basically um, yeah the, the accommodation is slightly different to what it would have been uh, originally they were designed to have one paid crew and the, the crew crew um, w would live up, up forward there and um, th their job was to uh, move the boat from um, locality to locality usually between Torbay the Solent and, and Burnham and so the, the owner could come and uh, sail the boat at the weekends. Um, the first owner of this boat was Sir Francis Dent who, who, who was um, quite a, uh, an ardent yacht, yachtsman. He, he owned, uh, only owned it for about a year and a half and, uh, but he'd, he owned a new boat nearly every two years I think. In the 50s it was called Fide. Uh, that was when the Lloyd's Registers uh, disallowed uh, boats with the same name, more than one boat with the same name to be in their register and it, it became FIDE for, for a few years but it, it's reverted back to mischief. You're, you're the chairman of the, uh, the, the West Solent class aren't you? That, that's right, it's but the, the W Boat Association yes. But it, it's it's sort of vanishing isn't it? A little it, bit. It's it disappearing? I, I've written written well partly because the owners a lot of owners have sold and partly because um, I'm about the only person that's particularly interested in the history and of the class everybody's sort of just disappeared basically and uh, uh, I've got the records of the association from 1924 onwards and they went up to 1953, I think it was, and then the class was disbanded for many years until we started it again in the early 1990s. And it's been a, a class with an association up till the present, but I'm about the only active member left now, um, unfortunately. 
You're the last man standing then? Just about, yeah. Um, but why do you think this is? I mean, this is a beautiful boat. Yeah. No, so I, so why, why, is, why are people losing interest in it? Well, they, they've moved. As a racing class, you can only race if everybody's together. And they've sort of separated. And so a couple have gone down to France, a couple down to the south coast. And uh, there's a couple which need restoring again and it, it's just lack of interest at the time being. I'm sure at some stage in the future somebody will resurrect the class but the sooner the better. Uh, how, how many of uh, the original ones are left? Is it just a handful? One, two, three? I suppose there's about nine or ten of them like that um, but some that have been sold on from the east coast here, like one went down to, to France last year. I, I know she's had an engine inserted in her, as have several others um, that have disappeared from the east coast. So, and uh, the advantage of an engine is, is, of course, you can get in and out of marinas, which is difficult with the yacht. But um, uh, I I use a bracket, which I I fit on the um, on the um, he headsail sheet track and put an outboard on that and when the outboard's working it, 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 it manages for the, f the few times that I need it if I, if I want to go into the into a marina the local canal or if there's absolutely zero wind otherwise the sails are more than more than enough to move her around the first West Solents were um, just built and de designed and built by um, the Birth and Boat Company, they were, they were designed by H.G. May and I forget his sir, first name, it's, it's somebody Jacobs um, and the, the first one was launched in 1921, um, Arrow, and in the next uh, nine years, 30, a total of 31 West Solents were, were, were launched and uh, and initially sailed mostly on the south coast based out of Cowes and Livington. Um, in the 30s classes were, some of the, those boats were mo moved up to Burnham where they were called the Royal Burnham One Design and uh, the, then there was a class down at Tor in Tor Bay. Um, they're, they're 34 foot 6 long, uh, draw 5 foot 2 and a half officially up a little bit variable mm -hmm. and um, seven foot six wide. They have a forty-five foot mast of which forty feet is above deck and a twenty-four foot boom. In the in the fifties people wanted cruisers, they didn't they didn't have the money for racing and West Solens were ideal for converting into cruising yachts. But most of the class got converted into cruisers. They had shortened booms, a shed built on deck stanchions put round and rails and, and some of them even had a bit cut off the stern just just to make them a more ideal. <laughs> so, so how many um, of the class are there left in the UK that you know about? Um, I'd say in Europe there's about I think about 14 of the original 31. There were originally five other West Solents which were built and shipped to Argentina to the Buenos Aires Yacht Club. The, and they call them the Los Indias class and there's three of those left in various stages of restoration. So what did she cost you when you when you first bought her and how much have you spent on the restoration over the years? I, I worked out buying her in France and uh, lorrying up, up to the coast and, and then putting her in the water. It was, I think it was 14,400 in 1991. Then um, over the next about four years, the restoration brought the total cost up to about 60,000. Um, that's a rough figure off the top of my head, but it, it, it was about that. Um, and although it's more, more than probably the boat's worth, that's the same with all boats. The boat's never worth what you put into them, as everybody knows. <laughs>